All right, Mixed Master B here live from the MMB Radio studios for the MMB Radio podcast where no topic is too big or too small. And on the phone lines right now, I have the smutty Miss Jessica Ryan. I say smutty because it's on your Twitter page. So <laughs> you can't, you can't fault me it. for that. So how's no, it going? No, no. I'm doing fantastic. And, you know, it actually kills me. Um, it, sometimes it's it, it disarms people when they ask me, like, hey, what do you do? And I found that if I respond with smut, they, there's a pause and they have to think about it. Whereas if I just say porn, there's that automatic preconceived notion of, like, oh, you whore. And, like, all the negative connotations. So I love saying smut because I actually some people don't actually know what it means. Well, smut, it kind of just puts you, like, in a whole category of things. Like, you could be doing uh, print, you could be doing video, you could be doing internet, like, you could just be doing... Well, smutty. the thing with porn. Yeah. So, But, yeah, but, but, you know, yeah. but, but, but like you said, smut kind of, smutty things kind of just throws people off, you know? So people are so used to... It really does. Smut, you know, they're not used to hearing smut, they're used to hearing a porn star, you know, so... Yeah, it kind of threw you, too, when you read it on my Twitter header. It, You're like, yeah. wait a minute, oh, hey. <laughs> I think I'm going to start introducing it. people that way now. Rather than saying I have adult film star, I'm going to say I have a, a smutty film star. You know, Here's just, a smut star for you guys. Yeah, so I just want to see uh, what people's uh, reactions are. But um, but it's I thank you on your for... Face. Yeah, <laughs> I thank <laughs> you for calling in and talking to us a little bit today. Um, so, of course. Uh, you're like looking through your Twitter and your photos, like you are, um, unique to say the least, um, a different, <laughs> a different, a different twist than what we've had, uh, previous guests on here. So I How guess, so? I'm curious. Well, I mean, like, well, you're promoting this, uh, creepy two thing that you got uh -huh. going on and, um, like you just, you just have like a kind of like a darker side, which is really cool and kick ass. I love that. But um, I guess I want to start from, like, the beginning is um, how did you first get into the uh, smut business? Um, and then how did it kind of just twist to, like, this darker stuff? Have you always had, like, a darker side? I've always had a darker side. The thing is, is that when you first get into the porn industry, um, they it's it's always like girl next door, bright colors, da 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 da, and I've always been like, oh god, really? Like uh, like sexy can be black lingerie, you know? Like most people's epitome of sexy lingerie tends to be black or red. Those are like the hot colors, you know? And um, so I just slowly allowed myself to grow into um, myself more so rather than um, have um, directors dictate every little piece of me. Um, but, um, yeah, but to answer your question about me getting into porn, um, I'm a little bit of an exhibitionist. I love doing things in front of people. Um, it might be because I'm the youngest of my family and I'm kind of an attention whore, but I also love shocking people. And um, I wanted to explore my sexual side of things, and I was looking at the world of stripping, but I was going to school full-time and working full-time, and I was like, there's no way in hell I can do this. I can barely even fucking sleep. So I tried to do a softcore porn, and it drove me fucking crazy. Um, like, the whole process, like, this dude's dick is right there. We're pretending to do all these things. I'm like, I could do this so much better if I was actually getting the dick and not just looking at it. And um, so then I, I did my research, and it took me about, like, six months to finally bite the bullet and get into porn. So it was just that simple. It's just, you know, every time I hear stories from people that tell me to get into porn, I'm like, wow, they make it seem so simple. But did you Well, have... I mean, it was, like, trust me, it was, I, I come from a very, um, not Midwestern, I'm from Arizona, but a very Protestant family. Um, and I was going into the medical field and everything. So there are major implications to take into consideration. Like um, you sh you do virtually, you shut doors. You shut doors when you go into porn because there's no way you could ever go into teaching. Um, it's unfortunately, sex work is still, um, has a lot of negative uh following like it's that uh, all the teachers that get um fired if they're found out that they did one or two videos online let's consider the internet is kind of forever 
So in their entire adult lives, they did one or two porn videos, and they're therefore demonized and a threat to the children and fired, um, rather than being like, oh, well, here you're an adult, um, a consenting adult. You, We all have sex. That might be why there are children on this planet. Maybe. I don't know. Um, and you just happen to do it publicly. You're therefore not really a threat to anyone. But no, if you have sex on camera, you're automatically a threat and a pervert to everybody. And it's some, some backwards ass shit. So I had to think about that. And um, it, that's why it took me more than six months to finally do it. Because, like, you could fuck your entire career. These are people that have been in for, like, years. And all of a sudden it's found out they've done porn. And they get fired. What do you do after that? Well, that, that's what I always say is that nothing lasts forever except the Internet. Um, so, yeah, exactly. So putting your so, business out there and recording, um, you are taking a, a big risk. And oh, a huge risk. Obviously, this is something you thought about before getting into it, but um, did mm-hmm. you have, like, discussions with your family prior to this? And um, if not, no, how did I, you tell them? Oh, Lord. Well, I actually didn't because I didn't know how to tell them. Um, it was one of those things. I'm like, well, the only person that I know that would, like, most likely watch porn is my dad or, um, like, a couple of cousins of mine. And uh, to be honest, I've always kind of sort of been the black sheep because I speak my opinion. And um, it, it doesn't always agree with them. So I was kind of like, nah. You know, I'll I'll let it come. And I just warned my dad, hey, just don't don't look this up. My cousins, I couldn't really give a shit. And uh, the ones that would be watching porn, at least. And um, so when uh, I'm walking my dog out right now, buddy, uh, uh, come here, come here. How did the dog <laughs> react to you getting into porn? I mean, was, was it really true or, or, or are you okay with my it? dog? Dude, my dog is fantastic with it, actually. Hey, buddy, this way. He, um, <laughs> my dog is awesome when it comes to um, having like stuff in front of him. He just goes and hides on the corner of the bed, or he goes and like he just goes to sleep. He's like, okay, you're doing that right now. <laughs> I always wondered if animals like pets knew what the hell was going on. You know what I mean? Like, if you had porn on the TV or something, like, or on the computer, like, does it, like, does your pet know what the hell you're watching? You know, I don't know. Um, it's it's a genuine question. It's a One dumb shit you should probably tickles... think about when you're high. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things that tickles me with him is he normally ignores like whenever something's going on. He's like, oh, cool, you're you're doing that. But I recently had a a guy friend of mine come over and like he was we were on the floor because it was impromptu sex and he was going down on me and um buddy came up behind him and tried to dominate him like tried to like mountain him like buddy has no balls so it's whatever he was literally just playing the dominance game with him and he's never done that before and i'm like okay (laughs) Just go and try to hump my fuck buddy. That's kind of fucked up, man. Well, that's what happens when you watch porn in front of your children. You know, they mimic. They yeah, mimic, they mimic what their parents do. You know, you've seen mommy. Oh god. And, you know, he's like, well, I learned it from watching you. You know, so. Well, I'm fairly certain that sex is okay. Um, it's like I don't, I don't know. Like for example. I have some of my friends, um, some of my best friends out here in L.A., they own a company called Synthetics. And it's the high-end sex dolls, and they, um, like, they sell for, like, $8,000. And these things are amazing. Like, he's, my friend Matt is a sculptor, and he's brilliant. But um, they take these dolls to different expos and everything, and they went to one that was, Oh, God. They were explaining it to me, but I might have had maybe a little bit of weed, so my memory is a little faltering on that. Um, but they were saying that they um, it was Italian, an Italian school group or something where they actually bought a couple of dolls for sex education. And the, like, they, the way they were showing them, to, like, they were showing them to kids. And they're, like, and 
they're just looking at it like, you know, this is like explaining all the parts and pieces and stuff. And as if it's nothing, the kids weren't phased by it. The parents weren't phased by it. The teachers weren't phased by it. And it was just a normal, natural thing. And like my friends were meanwhile, a little tripped out, like these are children. <laughs> and, but the, the way that other people in this world treat sex, um, is entirely different. Like, of course, it's not like the the Arab countries or anything where we might <laughs> have other questions in mind. But, um, I mean, if you treat sex in the human body like a normal thing, it's not it's not scary. It's not perverse. The world isn't going to end if you admit that, yes, sex happens. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, you know, it, it's kind of how we got here today for this podcast, so... Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of how everyone is here. It's because of sex. It's not like, yeah, it can be filthy and delightfully filthy. It can be a lot of fun and it can be very engaging. But sex, when you come down to the nitty gritty of it, it's a factor of life. And what are we afraid of? How many movies have you done to date? Man, I think I've got to do some research and figure this out because I like I've been getting asked this question and I genuinely don't know. Um, like I I'm a little vain. I'm not extremely vain. Um, and honestly, I get a little weirded out when I look up my own porn. Um, so sometimes I don't even know when some things come out unless it's like a bigger um, piece or a feature or something, mm-hmm. or like they tweet it so that I can promote it. I get weirded out looking at my own porn. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, like, and I'm probably my worst critic too. Now, do people like? I, I feel like people kind of keep score of how many films they've done to a certain point, and then Some afterwards, it's just kinda, you just kind of like, you know what? Screw it. Does it really matter how many I've done? Like, once you've done Honestly, one, it's like, it, you've done it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's not true. That's that's not true. Because the amount of years and the amount of t- like amount of stuff you've shot, it does speak to your experience level. Um, but at the same time, like it's just that's laborious to keep track of. I I already have so much stuff in my life that I keep track of that I really I, every time I shoot something, I don't know when it's going to come out. Sometimes like my first year in porn, I had shot so many things for Reality King. Come on, buddy. Come on. Hey. Um, and uh, they they didn't release something for like a year and a half. And so I, you never know when they're going to come out with something. Like I have um, one DVD coming out for Hustler. It's Black Cock Justice. They already have been promoting it and everything. And lo and behold, it doesn't come out until November. And I shot that, like, that was only a couple of months ago. That wasn't too bad. Now, what are your but, favorite favorite types of scenes to shoot? Like, whether it be um, different roles that you're playing or um, actual, like, boy, girl, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, what, oh, what do you well, enjoy doing? My mood, I'm not, I'm not very, like, many things. And... Um, of those many things, I, it varies. Like, typically speaking, I'm more into rough sex, especially when I'm, like, with a scene partner, et cetera. Like, very rarely am I in a really subdued, soft, sensual um, type of mood with somebody that isn't even my fuck buddy necessarily. So rough sex and animalistic stuff is typically where I go with things. Is there but, um, anything you won't do? Anything I want to? What do you mean? Like, what? What do you? What do you just like? If somebody ever approached you yeah. about doing a certain type of scene that you, you wouldn't even consider? Oh God! The one thing I haven't done is shoot a gangbang, and that's because I haven't shot an anal scene yet. And that I'm actually going to start looking into because I really want to do a gangbang. I love them. <laughs> Like, I've done gangbangs in my personal life, but there's a strong difference between people in the civilian world that like that do gangbangs versus porn people. <laughs> now, but you wouldn't be opposed to anything on film? Like, you said you haven't done anal, but, like, you're you're totally open to it. You just, it's got to oh, be Oh, yeah, I'm totally time. open. 
Yeah. Well, and it's also like because I don't have a boyfriend or a living dick, I don't get normal practice. <laughs> so that makes it a little toys. harder. They have toys for that. They do stuff. have toys. The toys are entirely different than taking a dick and taking a pounding. Well, I'm I'm looking through your Twitter and everything, and I mean, you do have your own custom dildos being made, right? My own what? Yeah, it says you are for your wet dream's sake. I have some custom dildos made. So yeah, um, those are actually my friends that I'm making. Um, they're making some stuff for me. So there you go. So you have a way to prep. Well, yeah, <laughs> but those are, like, and those actually feel like real dicks. But, I mean, it's different, like the angles. You can't, it's not like having a person attached to it. <laughs> I, I can't really speak from experience, but I'll just take your wording on it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so what's life like when you're not shooting porn? I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm looking and I'm doing some research here, and I see you have a lot of things on your Twitter, uh, like cosplay and, like, video games. And, like, are you kind of like the sci-fi nerdy chick when you're not doing oh. porn? Totally. I, I I don't think you understand how thrilled I am about some of these. Like, I, I don't know. I know a lot of people post shit, like, the Back to the Future Day and everything. Like, it genuinely excited me. And, like, I wanted to do a costume, but it was just too complicated. And uh, just, I don't know. There's something, I'm not a big pop culture fan, per se, but when it comes to sci-fi and everything, oh, God, I'll lose my shit. Um, especially when it comes to costuming. Um, it's just fun. It's uh, You use your imagination. I like to say that I've never actually grown up. <laughs> like when I was a kid, I dressed up and imagined things, and I'm an adult and imagining things and dressing up. It just happens to sometimes, a lot of the times, incorporate sex. My dog is deciding to play right now. Sorry if you hear him. <laughs> it's, all it's all good, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, he's he's wanting to play Toy War right now. So so you mentioned like Back to the Future and you wanted to dress up. Like who would you dressed up as? Like would you dressed up as? Oh, Marty dude. Or... You know it was a toss up. I mean the crazy hair. That was kind of that was kind of singing to me. Just rock out the professor. You want to do Doc Brown's hair and? Yeah, I mean, like, just, wouldn't that be fun? And that would be a simple one, because you just throw on a lab coat. And didn't you wear crazy pants? Yeah, you were. I mean, well, it depends. He, he had all kinds of different outfits throughout the trilogy. He did. Oh, he did. He did. But just do the classics, because, I mean, people have very little imagination. And honestly, I haven't watched them since I was maybe 10 years old. And unfortunately, yesterday I had a lot of stuff to do. Otherwise, I would have done an entire marathon while watching them and whatnot. Actually, but... I actually did the trilogy. They had it at a theater in my area. So oh. we, we literally sat at 5 o'clock and was there for six hours, watched all three movies back to back to back. Wow. So, yes, it was. Oh, that is so cool. Yesterday? Um, On the 21st, Wednesday. It was one day only. Oh, it was Wednesday. Sorry. Ugh. Back to Future Day. That's one right. day only. So. But you you've done cosplay before, and I love um, cosplay. People, um, I listen, finally. I was gonna say, people to listen to our podcast and check out the website. No, we do a lot of things with cosplay and comics and everything. Oh, do you really? So, like, who is who is someone that um, you enjoyed dressing up as? Oh God, you know, and I just love getting dressed up. Um, I had, uh, to be honest. The, it was the cheekiest, cheapest little costume, but it was my most recent thing that I did, and I actually haven't done anything with it yet. It was just this Viking costume that I went and had my hair and makeup done, and I I literally shot stuff like around my apartment complex. But we found like spots where they're like plant looking, so we didn't have to go out and like because we were at sunset, and we're like we need to use this light like now. So um, I have this Viking costume. I think it might actually be my um, my profile picture right now. And um, I have this video uh, that the guy edited together where it's like I'm a dragon hunter. There's like a dragon in the sky and stuff. Like he, he put a little CGI thing of the dragon in the sky. And um, that was so much fun. But I think it's just because I got really creative with it. I We made something with it, shot it, and it was beyond just being hot and taking a couple of pictures. 
it's the any costume that I do and I take it to the nth degree like that is fun. And this is just a cheap little out of the bag costume, like Halloween costume. Well, looking at it, you can see it on Twitter at um, Jessica Ryan X X Yes, and I'm looking at it and like this is pretty kick ass. This is just a package like right like from the like party. Scene yeah, it was thing. like. Well, um, so there's a place that's right by me. It's, oh, God, what the, the hell is the name of the company? Like, I never see these costumes. And to be honest, their costumes aren't the, like, sexiest costumes, per se. It's like California something. Now, but, does it come with the shield and the sword and everything? Or is these, like, props No, I found, I found that separate. And this, the sword and the shield is hilarious because they, they came together. And the sword actually is, like, it rests in the shield and it's this little skeleton dude so it's like some sort of like it's a tiny little skeleton on the front I'm like whose skeleton is this either i killed a child or it's a little person and this is just like it's so fucked up <laughs> you're you're the, you're the little person slayer she's uh slaying yeah people so hey it, right two things are either going to happen you're either going to fall off a curb and die or jessica ryan's just going to slash you so you know, just beware. <laughs> so all little people right? listening, just watch for curbs and Vikings. Because you never know where they're oh. going to creep up. <laughs> I know the Viking might come get you. <laughs> so also I see that you're uh, you're in one of the pictures, like you're playing video games. Are you a big gamer? So I've actually, I, I used to be a huge PC gamer. And I've purposely stepped out of that world because, like, to the extent of where I could have, like, an overpay, like, what, what back pay and everything with, um, sorry, my brain's waking up. I'm just now having my coffee. Um, God, <laughs> I, I could be doing overtime. There's the term I'm searching. It's been so long since I've done a nine to five. Um, just playing video games. Um, like it's more than forty hours a week. And so I was like, I think I need to cut this out, especially when I started going to school. I was like, Oh, I can't <laughs> So like are you but, playing games like Doom or like like what are you what were oh you Oh God. What was I playing? Well, I still have very fond memories of EverQuest and EverQuest two. Um, I was doing MMORP RPGs. Um, and then I played um, World of Warcraft naturally, and um, everything else under the sun. Like they, they would occasionally come out with things. Like there was one that was like Lineage Two, and that one was a lot of fun. It's just they had a lot of um, issues with like the the gold farming and everything, which jacked up prices for um, getting any sort of equipment. So it it like the the market system was kind of fucked up because they didn't have that under control. And just little games like that where, I mean, like on top of it, there's an inner economy to the game. And I'm, I'm just a huge nerd. Well, that I, should, I love it. I, should... I think it's awesome that, you know, you have like this <laughs> inner nerd and it's it's it's, 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 uh, it's like a, a, a category of people, um, not to characterize people, but it's just like it's a whole nother audience of people that you could be, you know, selling yourself to. I, I guess I can't yeah, and honestly, selling yourself to, but... Oh, it sounds so delightfully <laughs> filthy. So... You're talking to the wrong girl saying that that's a bad type of thing. It sounds so delightfully filthy. <laughs> but no, um, I, um, I've actually... The thing that I recently shot, and you're probably looking at, is um, uh, my friend has a Twitch feed. I think it's called Twitch where um, you basically stream when you're playing video games and you can interact with people. And um, I wanted to give it a try, and it was so much fun. Like, And you can make money, like people can donate. Um, so like say if you want to get a new camera, you want like just, they can donate money and um, you pay just playing video games and interacting with them. And it it's non porn related, but porn happens to help, I imagine. Now, and do you, um do you plan on doing more of the cosplay stuff with porn or gaming? Oh god. Porn? Yeah, so much of it. Like honestly that's kind of the direction I'm kinda of taking things aside from my um femdom stuff that I'm getting into is I really enjoyed the costume aspect because porn already is a fantasy. 
there it's already a costume to some extent. Like it's not like you're going out into the real world dressed like this all of the time. Sometimes, like in LA, you totally can, but in Middle America, not so much. But so I'm like, why not take it to the next level and just have costumes, do something fun with it. Um, And it can be an implied storyline. There can be a storyline, but there's just lots of sex and fun imagination. Because let's face it, we're all fucking grown children, essentially. And who doesn't like to make believe still? Um, And then with gaming, um, it's... I prefer, I love watching movies. I I prefer reading because it's more interactive with my brain. Um, And even more so with video games like MMORPGs or storyline stuff. Because I play, the thing I played on Twitch was a Telltale game. It was um, the Tales of Borderlands or something like that. And it's just all these things that mentally stimulate and which for me is a huge erogenous zone. If I'm not mentally stimulated... Nah, I'm not going to be as stimulated sexually. Um, tap into these things. Have fun. Interact with the people that are the same way. And, you know, I'm I'm not just a monkey that jerks off, although sometimes I can be. <laughs> well, that I would definitely pay if you were doing cam shows. I would definitely love to see that. Um, yeah, uh, being a, doing what? To being a monkey. <laughs> yeah, just being to... a monkey? Oh, my God. I actually have a monkey onesie. There you go. See, I'm setting up, setting up yeah. different marketing ideas for you. Right. <laughs> Although the, the the complication that I found with onesies is they need to have like butt flaps or to have a zipper that goes all the way around. Like, what the fuck is that? You put this entire thing on. It's supposed to be cold out. Who wants to get entirely undressed just to go pee? This is true. This is very true. And I can't masturbate in it. Oh, well, then, you know, maybe this monkey thing's not going to work out then. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've put thought into it see that's the problem with me and porn i don't put a whole lot of thought into it i'm just like let's just fucking do it you know what i mean yeah fuck yeah. it we'll do and it live gets... <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize all of the issues with the thing you're like oh that doesn't work does yeah it? this isn't that's this is why i do podcasts and i dj and i'm not a porn star you know like i just you know i love it i need a lot of direction um, so <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned that you don't currently have a boyfriend. Um, is this by personal choice? Like how hard is it to date inside the business? Oh, it's really, it's complicated. It's so complicated. I mean, I could easily find a boyfriend, but that's not to say that it would be a healthy relationship. And to be a hundred percent honest, I'm, I might be a little bit more in a selfish space right now. Like there's so many things that I want to do and so many things that I can do. Um, and I don't want to have to answer to anybody. Um, I don't want to have to make sure that they're cool with it. I don't want to have to be like, Hey, I'm not going to be at home anytime soon. Um, cause I'm deciding to go out to this party. The only thing, the only person I have to answer to is my dog. Make sure he's taken care of. Cause he's kind of like my illegitimate child. But, um, I mean, it's just, I think dating is too complicated. I'm exploring and doing too many things. It's cool to have a fuck buddy or two, but uh, to to have to be accountable for someone else's emotions when I just want to do fuck all and whatever I want. Now, it, uh, what kind of guy do you like? I mean, when you, when you do have someone, um, or is that not even something you think about? Because, as you said, you don't like the whole being tied down thing well it's not that being tied down is a problem it's the the majority of men especially la men um there's there's a constant seeking for validation and um kind of like a weird codependency that guys have when it comes to relationships like and honestly i it, very few people do I ever meet where they they just want to be on their own and enjoy your company when they can and do whatever. Um, it's kind of like an upgraded friendship to some extent, I guess. Like I like people to be independent. Um, a lot of people tend to lose themselves in relationships and make it kind of like an us thing rather than me and you. And I'm just, I don't know. Maybe it's again. I might be just be in a selfish space, or I'm just weird. <laughs> but um, it's, go ahead. 
I was gonna say, I mean, I'm I'm totally infatuated with you, so I don't see where you know the weirdness part is. But um, like, do you have guys who um, recognize you from doing movies, and like, how do you react when they they spot you out in public? Um, well, for the most part, people are too chicken shit to say anything to me. I'll just sit there, like, whispering to their buddies, and that makes things really uncomfortable. Like, honestly, if you see someone, I get it. Like, I I would rather not have somebody approach me and say anything to me while I'm out and about doing stuff, because when I'm out in my regular life, I'm not in porno mode, and, I mean, it, it is kind of flattering to have somebody be like, oh, my God, like, totally jerk off to your films that's kind of a flattering thing but do it in a respectful way and honestly if you don't know how to chances are you're not going to and just don't do it and if you don't have the social graces to be like oh yeah this would be the best way to compliment somebody you run into that does porn um it's complicated because i I understand that my sexuality and my porn, um, it, it is a little bit more personal, and although it's public, um, be respectful, and most people don't have that ability. Just be weird. Hide in the corner. Just don't approach me. It gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Well, you know, like, you know what I would have probably done? If I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if it was exactly you, I probably would, like, send you a tweet or something. And be like, hey. well, that, that would be that would be cool. I would totally be down with that because again, there is that awkwardness of like if you're approaching somebody and you realize they're not in fact that porn girl, then whew. <laughs> yeah, that does make <laughs> you might it get awkward. Flat, man. <laughs> hey, you don't you do flat. porn? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I would have just like, said that's, uh, that's a fucked up pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do porn, <laughs> guys? Do not use that pickup line. Do, no, however, no. free to use the, the Twitter approach. Just send a tweet and be like, hey, I'm at such and such place, and I could have swore I seen you there. And then just yeah, hope, I, and hope that you reply and be like, yeah, I am here. Like, you know, be like, oh, really? Can I come by and, you know, say hello? You know? Yeah, and see, that would be cool. That, that, see, you have the social graces, man. So kudos. I give away my <laughs> secrets, you know? So anybody wants to send me a payment through PayPal for that little, uh, bit of knowledge that you can do so at you know but um but mentioning twitter oh, you should totally plug it in i should plug it plug in your paypal yes if you <laughs> want to send me paypal you just let me know hit me up on twitter at mixmaster b i'll give you the email address and um you know well you guys can send me money you know you give me one of those GoFundMe accounts you know or something like yeah that. man that just money. for your stellar advice and how to talk to porn girls <laughs> exactly you know so, um, hey, you know, I think there's a market there. There is, you know, it's just a whole new venture and everything. I'll cut you your, uh, you know, your percentage in the, uh, the, the help in that. And my contributions. <laughs> your contributions to it. Um, <laughs> so speaking of online and the World Wide Web and all that shit, where can people find you at online, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, oh, Facebook, Tumblr? MySpace. I don't even know what other fucking AOL chat room things are going on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All of the you. things. Yes. Well, so on Twitter, um, it's my most consistent feed is Jessica Ryan Triple X because there I don't have to filter out what I put on because I do a lot of naked stuff. Um, and then on um, Instagram, it's the wild and zany Jess. And it's the wild and it's Z-A-N-E-Y Jess. Kind of like from the wild, um, the Animaniacs. Um, I don't know if you remember the song. Mm-hmm. Wild and zany. I'll Let's let see. you sing it. I, yeah. I definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a singer. <laughs> uh, but it comes from the, from the Animaniacs song. Um, and, uh, then you can also find me on my website. It's Jessica Ryan, triple com, And, um, I'm, I'm always updating that with new clips and smut. And I actually do membership shows, um, for it, anyone that's interested in cam shows. I do a two half hour shows and one hour membership show every month. Um, and that's just included in whatever you pay per month. So there you have so, it. You can find her on minutes. there and, and check her out. And uh, we appreciate you waking up early and Buddy getting up early to uh, talk to us. And uh, 
yeah, just, you know, we, we hope to see more things from you. Like, I'm definitely following you now back on Twitter. Thank you for following me. Um, of course. It's, it's always kind of cool to see a porn star or a smut star follow you first. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel like you're actually accomplishing <laughs> something in this world. Um, so I followed you back, and uh, we hope to see real cool cosplay stuff. And, uh, you know, once uh, Comic-Con comes back around here, like, maybe we'll have you back on the show, and we'll talk about Comic-Con. Oh, that would be so killer. talk about video games. and. Well, uh, you know, Stanley's Kamikaze is the end of the month, right? Yeah. So maybe we could probably do something, you know, find out what you're going to be dressing up as and then, uh, you know, just really uh, yeah. talk it up. All right. I'm so game. I had so much fun. And this, I'm, I was up already. I just got a random call while I was making my coffee. I'm like, sure, my brain's not awake, but I'll talk to people. <laughs> my brain is usually never awake when I do these things. So it, it, it works out well. You know, they always say two oh, brains are better than fun. one. So. Together, we came together like Voltron and made this shit happen, so I, I appreciate it. That, that, that's good 80s television cartoon knowledge there for you dudes. Oh, oh, you made me want to watch some cartoons, and I can't. I gotta get stuff going. Uh, well, all those other people uh, out there, Google it, and make sure you check out Jessica Ryan. Uh, we Netflix, appreciate you. Netflix uh, has all the amazing 80s cartoons. They do. They do. Uh, we could talk about cartoons. We'll save that for another time. We'll have to go through down. Oh my god! Later. Yeah. I will. I Ooh, will create a yeah. list of cartoons that were like my favorites, and you create a yeah, list. Yeah, and of you cartoons gotta you gotta favorites. message them to me, and yeah. like I will I will do some research and watch some of these things because I was I was born late eighties, so some of the stuff is a little bit missed on me. But I did have older siblings, so I watched a lot of their stuff. There you but have it. I don't. Yeah, so we'll ha- we'll have to go over old ass cartoons and <laughs> we'll do geek radio. We'll do a whole geek radio podcast one night. Man, I'm so down. I am so down. Well, I thank you again for calling us on such short notice, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Of course, thank you so much. I'm Jessica Ryan, a hot fiery redhead, and you are listening to Mix Master B on MMB Radio. Mm, I hope you certainly enjoy yourselves.